Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are bringing the first episode of a series. So, this is going to be the start of the horror figure series. Um, like, you know, just the characters from the horror movies by NECA and stuff. They made a bunch of those. So, this is the first episode of one. And I think it's a pretty good introduction episode. Uh, today, we are reviewing the ghost face figure. The ultimate ghost face figure. Um, uh, yeah, and I chose this figure because the world is focused on S Scream and Ghostface right now due to Call of Duty adding the new Ghostface operator and a ton of other things, but, um, yeah, so I feel this is a good introductionary episode to the horror series, and, yeah, let's just get right into the box, but there is something that I do need to tell you guys, there are a couple accessories that I do not know where they are from or which screen movie they're from so if you, some kind people in the comments would like to uh tell me where these things are from that would be very much appreciated so yep without further ado we're gonna finally get into the box now okay guys here we have ghost face box now this box is actually very nice i really enjoy this box for i don't know it's just kind of like the simplicity of it you know it's it's a really nice box. I do have to say so myself. I mean, I gotta give a little bit of prop to myself, and you know, checking out other boxes and choosing the best one. But either way, this box is amazing. So starting at the front, got a nice little picture of the ghost face mask. Going to the top, ghost face side, nice little picture of him with the knife and the voice changer. Same thing on the other side, bottom. Nothing important, but look at that. Randy did it again. And with the help of a new person, Stefan Falkins. Sorry if I said that wrong, but yep. And I think one of the many reasons I enjoy this box is due to the back. Like that's just such a interesting back to a box. Like it's, I haven't seen this type of like back to the back of a box for a NECA figure like much. I mean, I've seen it before, like with some of the other horror figures, but this is such a new like, area for me in reviews that it's just it looks very nice i've got to admit it looks very nice and that's part of the reason why i love this box but yeah then there are some of the accessories down there and one of the masks does glow in the dark and i will be turning off my light box as an example of that or to show you that it can so or like i'll be putting it in my hands i don't know we'll find out but yep, that is the um, box. So without further ado, we're going to get right into the accessories because his accessories are really neat. Okay, guys, here we have all of Ghostface accessories laid out for your viewing pleasure. And I do have to say, this is a nice site. This is a really cool accessory site. Probably one of my favorites that I've ever done. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But, okay, the first accessory we're going to be doing is the glow-in-the-dark ghost face mask. And this is actually pretty basic, but mostly because the head and mask is basic, kind of. But, you know, it's got that nice glow-in-the-dark green color. So, I'm going to be showing you that it can. If you guys can see that a little bit, I'll be, like, covering it up. Or I'll be doing the best I can, you guys. I don't know. This is a light box, so I don't know if you guys are able to see that, but... If you guys can, you can see that it does glow in the dark a little bit. It hasn't been charged much, but hopefully you guys could see that it can. I'm sorry if it, you didn't really, but just know that it does. And just look up another review if you really want to see it. So, yeah. Now, this is now the next accessory we're going to be doing is one of the accessories where I don't know where it's from because I if I'm being honest, I have only watched the first Scream movie, but yeah, so here's the second mask, and it, this one looks like a little bit burnt, and it does have a little bit of a burnt, like, plastic feel to it. Kind of similar to how this feels, like the sack of the hood or whatever. And it it does feel like it's kind of dry and crackly and broken. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, if you guys could tell me where that's from, that would be nice. And then I'm going to assume this is just... A bloody ghost face mask. I mean, the ghost face mask has been bloody before. So, 
be a very similar feel, except this one does have the very like, like soft, smooth type of mask feel to it. So, and here are the hands, and there is something up with the hands because they are enclosed. You cannot open the fingers or like, they're not open. So, but that actually makes it very good for holding the knife. With this one, this is meant for holding the knife as well, but as you can see, the fingers are not enclosed. So, yep. And then this right here is the voice changer that Billy and I believe Randy. No, you guys can tell me down in the comments. I don't know. Oh yeah, spoiler warning. I don't, uh, so this is a spoiler warning for the first scream. If you guys could tell me down in the comments who the other guy with Billy was in the kitchen, um, that would be nice as well. But yep, mainly Billy used it. But so here's the voice changer that Billy used when he was on the phone calls with Sydney. It's actually really cool because it has like all the little buttons and stuff. And look at this. There's even like a little slot for the battery that you can pull out. I mean, you can't actually pull it out, but still that's very nice detail. Okay, now we're moving on to the knives. Okay, so this is the knife from the first movie. A nice little blood covering. But there is a problem with it. As you guys can see, there is no silver. Like in the first movie, the back end right here, the little butt of the knife was silver. But I'm going to let it slide because this knife is cool. And then this is the knife with like a hunt or a hunting knife with like a wooden handle. So, yep. Very nice detail, and it does actually have a bit of a woody type feel, very similar to the side. Okay, sorry for that edit right there, but my camera was having issues. But now we're back in the game. So this is the kitchen knife, and I don't know where this one is from, but he did use one, I think, in the first screen movie. I don't know. There's a lot of knives, and there's a lot of dead people. So, yep. And this one, the blood actually is very interesting on this one because it looks like kind of like a slash not really a stab it looks kind of like a slash or cut because the blood only goes up it doesn't go like all the way into it it only goes up around it so that's actually really nice detail to how this knife was probably used and then there's something interesting about this knife too because the handle actually feels very plasticky kind of like very similar to the mask and that's actually really cool in my opinion so there's the kitchen knife and like i said the wooden handle on this knife it feels very similar to this because they're meant to be wood and I do like how this feels because it feels a lot like wood you guys I'm not gonna lie it feels very much like wood and just even looking at the scythe this thing looks amazing and it is amazing I have very nice pictures on my camera of some nice poses with this scythe and with that mask just because it makes sense I don't know you know what I mean it just makes sense but yep and the blade isn't very sharp, but it can, like, enough. It can cut you. And something interesting, barely any pressure applied. White line, guys. White line, indicating that this thing's very sharp. Like, the tip, it's it's pretty sharp for a uh, accessory. Not gonna lie. But, yep, that's gonna conclude it for the accessories. And now we're gonna get into this absolutely amazing figure. So let's go over. Alrighty guys, here we have Ghostface himself, or once again, another spoiler warning, Billy. So, yeah, I okay, listen guys, I know Scream, or the, the killer, was two people, but I'm gonna refer to him as Billy, because Billy was my favorite. I did not like Shaggy. Shaggy was alright, I guess. But, okay, besides the point, this figure is basic, and I love it. So, the reason he's basic is, is just look at him. That's all he is, essentially. Some dude with a cloak on. But I love it. It's just the design. It's amazing. I love what NECA did with it. All right, I'm going to ramble on forever. So let's just start with the feet and work our way up. All right, so starting with the feet, we can see that these are very nicely detailed shoes. Like, even with the seam on the heels, guys, that's crazy to me. Another rail on the bottom. But they do have some nice movement, though. You just get them going. You can, like, bend his feet a little. So that's kind of cool, actually. Yep, and then moving or pulling up the cloak a little bit, you guys can see they actually added pants. And this is crazy because look at the detail in the pants, too. Like the seam down the side and everything. But the main thing that took me back with them actually adding pants was they actually added pants. 
because I've seen some of the other cloaked figures that NECA has done, and they haven't really put pants on it, so, or pants on them, so that's actually really cool. Props to you guys. Well, you guys too, but NECA mainly. So, then pulling up even farther, going on up, you can see there is nothing on the torso. I wish they would have at least added like a white undershirt or something. Maybe like, I don't, I don't know, like a scream shirt. That would have been cool, I guess. But there's nothing there, nothing really to see. So we're just going to move on to the arms. Moving on to the arms, they do have some nice movement. You just got to get them going. Or at least for my figure, you do. Yep. It's a nice circle movement. Forearms can not spin. They are very tight, or at least on mine, at least. So... Uh, yep, the sleeves cannot be pulled back. That's kind of saddening, not gonna lie, but yep, what can you do? Hands spin infinite amount of times, but yep, there's that closed hand, like I said. Moving on to the arm, or the other arm, literally the exact same type of movement, but my hand came loose, so I have to be kind of careful of this hand. I mean, I can shove it, force it back in, but I don't really know, want to break it, you know, because this is the hand that the voice changer goes in. And you can get some really nice poses with this hand, and I don't want to break it. So I'm just going to be kind of careful. You can see nice movement in the arms as well over here. And then moving on to the back. I mean, there's nothing really to see, but, you know. And on the arms as well, you can see that there are the little, ooh, you know. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but yeah, you guys get what I'm saying. All right, now onto the hood. And the mask. So the hood can be pulled down. This is how you put the head on. You pull the head down and the head falls off. That's not what happens, guys. But that was going to bring me to my next point. So the mask or the head, it's really hard to put on with this with this hood in the way. So um, you just kind of have to force it in there or something I like to do. And this kind of gives it more movement and just more ability to look better. Just pull the hood over and kind of a lie or kind of align it with the ball. And boom, you got yourself a fully workable ghost face. Works perfect, actually. And you can get some nice, better looking poses out of that, like that right there. You couldn't really do that with that one because it'd fall off. I'm just feeling it right now and it would fall off. So, yep, I prefer doing this. That may be wrong to some of you guys, but that's how I'm going to do it for the rest of this figure's life. So, if we can just get Scream to stand here. Come on. Come on. You can do it. And that's actually going to be something I want to talk about next. This figure is incredibly hard to stand, even though it looks like he's really easy to. But he is incredibly hard to stand, but I still love him either way. But that is going to do it for the review, you guys. I hope you guys did definitely enjoy. And please, like I said, if you guys do know where those were some of those accessories where I didn't know where they were from, please put them down in the comments. That would be a huge help. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Drop a like, subscribe. See you guys later.